Hello everybody, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be back with another tutorial. And this is part 2 of the Galactic Craft tutorial series. And for this video, we're going to be covering oxygen generation, uh, oxygen sealing, and all sorts of functions that you need to live in space. Now, of course, last part one was a little confusing. Apologies for the background sound. But last uh, last tutorial was a bit confusing. So this time, I'll keep it nice and simple. Anyways, let's get straight into it. First things first, I know we haven't changed that much, which is very funny. I don't know why I did. Let's get straight into it. But anyways, uh, we have the space map. This is what pops up when you launch a rocket ship. And it gives you the entire map of the solar system. Now, depending on which rocket you launch in, you will have access to various different planets. Now, we're gonna, going to briefly go into the moon. So, as you can see, it's very easy to uh, exit out and enter. You all, you just need to click on a planet. And then click again to see moons or satellites. And as you can see, there's the moon right there. So we're going to launch to there. And now we are on the moon. As you can see, it is a very, very dark place with not a lot of things to do. But there are a lot of monsters and there is zero oxygen. As you can see, if I pop in over here, uh, the oxygen is slowly decreasing from my oxygen tank. So let's go over all of the ingredients in a successful space station or moon base. First things first is the oxygen. Now I should probably get creative mode out. All right, let's go over the first oxygen device that you will be needing to use. Now this will be likely your first ever item to craft that creates oxygen. So let's go into it. This is how you craft it with four compressed steel, two oxygen fans, two oxygen vents, and one compressed aluminum. And this is the oxygen distributor. Now, it's very simple to use. Uh, you give it, for the purposes of this explanation, I'll be using infinite batteries and infinite oxygen supplies just to make it a little bit easier for me. Once you've plugged in the ore, give it some energy and oxygen as you can see there will be a bubble creating and in this bubble you will not uh, you will use the bubble distributors air not your oxygen tanks air which is pretty useful now of course the greater the bubble is the more oxygen is going to use and this is not really uh let's say a long-term solution because i mean it's pretty hard to maintain now you may be wondering how do i get oxygen in the first place like in a environment where there's no oxygen well there's two different methods that i specifically like and i found to be very very useful okay so here are the two methods that i favor the most the first one is the most commonly used and it is called leaf stacking and well, this involves using a lot of leaves around maybe a couple oxygen collectors. And well, it's a pretty good method for aesthetic purposes, since you can easily hide an oxygen collector. For example, if I was to just cover this up, you would barely notice the oxygen collector. Of course, for this example, I will be using infinite batteries. But besides that, well, it's very... It's very good for aesthetic purposes, but I don't really prefer this for uh, mega oxygen collection because, well, it's just not going to generate as much, say, with this method, the wheat farm. Now, I, I know it's a bit, a bit unusual to put a farm in space, but hear me out. You can basically stack up to 12 oxygen collectors in this kind of position and now if i was to give this as an infinite battery as you can see it's collecting 72 oxygen with the leaf one you only collect 56 out of this many leaves and this one is far easier to uh, create oxygen as i've said you can stack 12 of these and all of these 
Uh, of course, they consume a lot of power. But once you got the power situation under control, and then you plug it all of these into genuine power, then well, you're you're gonna have a oxygen making machine. You can even have two, and it's incredible how much oxygen this can create. You stack twelve of these, and all of these collect seventy two, and oh wow, you will have. A magnificent oxygen creation. All right, we're, so we're gonna cover the last three oxygen modules. Since I've already covered the oxygen compressor and decompressor in my first video in the first part one, which uh, go check it out in the description below. Well, uh, I do not need to talk about those, but we're gonna be covering the last three oxygen modules, which is the oxygen sealer, oxygen detector, and oxygen storage modules. Starting with the oxygen sealer, this is basically a more advanced version of the oxygen bubble distributor. And this is how you craft it. Um, uh, you're going to need four compressed aluminum, two oxygen vents, two compressed steel, and one oxygen fan. And as you can see, the, the GUI is a little complex. Now, when you first give this some oxygen and power, you might see a status area too big slash unsealed. Now, every few seconds, this will uh, this will check if the area is sealed. Now, when the area is sealed, that means it will not have any holes, and it will not have any holes that relate to the outside. And as you can see, once it sees that the status in the room is completely sealed, that is when it will uh, status sealed. Now, in the sealed area, you have complete oxygen freedom, and well, you're never going to lose oxygen. And uh, there's this little bar that says thermal attachments. Uh, controller and this basically allows uh, to eliminate radiation from the air so you will not take radiation damage from this and it's a pretty useful tool it doesn't tell you craft it four compressed bronze two redstone one oxygen van one compressed steel and one basic wafer and the oxygen detector is very simple well it's very simple it doesn't even have a GUI and basically how this works is that if it detects oxygen, it will emit a redstone signal. So, for example, if you connect a, a redstone uh, a oxygen detector to your lighting system in your space station, well then, you, when the lights turn off, you will know that it has no more oxygen. So you can quickly get an alarm system from that, which is slightly useful. And the oxygen storage module is pretty self-explanatory. You give it some oxygen, it stores the oxygen, and then you can take out the oxygen using this port over here. Of course, in space, you're going to need some energy. And, well, the main methods, I'm going to be covering the main methods uh, to how to generate uh, electricity. And, well, you're going to need some solar panels, uh, energy storage module, and some solar arrays and maybe a geothermal generator. So let's get straight into this. I'm not going to be covering the coal generator as that is way too basic. Now the first one you're probably going to be crafting is the basic solar panel. And this is how you craft it. Four compressed steel, one full solar panel, one steel pole, two aluminum wire, one basic wafer. And well, as you can see, the basic solar panel is generating 18 gajoules here slash time said day. Is that day? I'm not too sure. That's not day. That's not day at all. But anyways, the basic solar panel, well, it's just a solar panel. There's nothing really special about it. Uh, the red uh, output allows you to extract energy from it. It's not very useful. So... I recommend the advanced solar panel. And this will allow you to generate so much more electricity and so much more efficiency. Now, this advanced solar panel will allow you, well, it allows you to track the sun's motion 
and then coordinate the piano's motion. And this is how you craft it. it it's nothing different. It's the same recipe, just with one advanced wafer. And this delivers so much more electricity. It's not even worth crafting that. But of course, if you don't have the resources, which you should probably do, uh, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. And well, of course, there is the same output port. Now with the energy storage module, I've already covered the oxygen. So here we have the energy. Oh, goodness me, something happened. But anyways, uh, this is the output port and this is the input. This allows you to store energy and it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, something that a lot of people don't recognize is the solar array. And this acts like the solar panels, except you can actually get so many more solar arrays. And this is how you craft it. It's just three solar array panels two heavy aluminum wire, and one advanced wafer, which is extremely expensive. But you can connect these all together with a controller. This requires one advanced wafer, four compressed steel, three heavy aluminum wires. And once you connected a controller to this, well, this allows you to generate a lot of energy indeed. Now, of course, solar panels still look a lot more better, and they're a lot cheaper to make. But once you've got enough solar arrays, uh, well, this is going to be generating a lot of energy as well. And you can basically stack so many of these to the point it gets ridiculous. Like, look, I just added something a lot more, and now it's generating so much more so it's very useful of course with solar panels you can also kind of stack them but they obviously have a area that you cannot stack them and this allows you to connect so many solar arrays to one controller and it's very useful and very easy for cable management and well on some planets you can use the geothermal generator this allows you to, uh, this must be placed over a sulfur spout, which sometimes spawns on the planets of Venus. And once you insert some power into it, well, it, it still must be placed above a solar spot. And then this allows you to go, well, generate power. So I've explained all of this, but how does this work in the actual space station? So let's go into an actual space station. Okay, now I do not take credit for the base design of this solar station, but this was built with creative mode and well, <laughs> it's a working space station. All right. So you have a bunch of energy array modules and you may be wondering what are these? Well, these are basically wireless uh, energy receivers. And it's, I mean, it's pretty useful, not going to lie. And, oh my god, let's go into the air vent. As you can see, this is an oxygen uh, sealer. This allows you to seal the oxygen in here. And this is the oxygen sealer. There's a lot of oxygen sealers, and as you can see, the oxygen detector is powering a light. Oh. And as you can see, some leaves over here, and you have a bunch of... Uh, the oxygen collectors collecting some oxygen. It's basically, this is how you generate uh, power. Of course, this is going to be super expensive to build in actual survival mode. So I, I don't really recommend this as a base guide, but oh, wow. The wheat farms. This is a fully functional space station and, uh, uh, this actually took me a really long time to build it, despite the base plan not being my design. So even with the help of everything, Galactic Craft is going to take you a very long time to completely get the basis of it. Of course, it's a little bit glitchy over here. And of course, that's basically all I have for part two. Uh, I will not create any more tutorials for the Galactic Craft series. 
since I believe these two tutorials, uh, firstly, they have been very stressful to create. Second, uh, I believe they are informational enough. Anyways, I wish you luck on your space journey. Make sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and if you really liked it, please turn on notifications for like more and more tutorials. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the video. Bye!